How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. So, can you guys uh, name some gambling activities that you're familiar with? Mahjong. MJ. Every API group we get, we go to, we'll get MJ, right? Mahjong. Anything else? Texas Hold'em. So car, car, car games, are they popular? Yes. So we have two car rooms in San Jose, right? And both of them have obviously very popular Texas Hold'em. Uh, popularity has faded a little bit, but it's still going on pretty strong. Anything else? March Madness. March Madness. So sports betting, right? Anyone does sports betting? And what is said in this room will stay in this room. This is a safe place, okay? <laughs> Your answers will not be used to make any clinical diagnosis, I promise. I don't know about Jorge, but I won't. <laughs> Anything else? I'll go back up. <laughs> translate. <laughs> What's that? I don't know how to translate that. Is that a cultural specific uh, game? Yes. Great. Right. Chinese yeah, New Year. Yeah, okay. So there are certain games that are also more prevalent um, among, uh, uh, during certain times, right? They're not maybe traditionally seen as gambling games, but we also see that they c may have the possibilities to become more um, social and gambling activities. Anything else before I move on? Betting on football. Betting on football. So we had sports betting, right? You could bet on actually other kinds of sports too, like horse racing. A any racetracks here in the Bay Area? Belmont. Belmont's actually, um, Bay Meadow is close. We still have Golden Gate Field, though, in uh, East Bay, right? And then there are other things like internet gambling. We'll maybe talk a little bit more about that if you're interested, but let's move on. What? There's a lot of, like, um, non-organized gambling in the Vietnamese community. Right. All, you know, people like under Yeah. Care. So not only do you have ones that are licensed and they are legitimate businesses, they also obviously have unlicensed games, right? And that happens a lot in different ethnic communities, too. In uh, Oakland, they just recently um, busted an illegal uh, cockfighting operation. They had to actually had to put down close to 100 uh, game cocks because they were so aggressive and they couldn't keep them. So uh, let's move on to um, talking a little bit about gambling in the U.S. in California and a little bit about San Jose, too. Uh, if you would go to the first slide, please. In 1975, don't bring it up yet, there's only one state that had legalized casinos. Which one was it? Good. Very easy, right? Uh, please. Handful of states in the uh, Northeast, 13 states had state-operated lottery. You guys know who? You guys know who operates lottery in California, right? Uh, yeah. It's the uh, state government, right? So this is a vehicle for states to generate revenue, right, without raising taxes. Uh, this is what the picture looks like today. If you go on to the next one, only two states don't have legalized forms of gambling. Geography test. Can you tell which one? Utah, Hawaii. Utah and Hawaii. Hawaii, good. So, do you think residents of Hawaii and Utah don't have access to gambling? No. <laughs> so we actually found out that Las Vegas actually subsidized Hawaiians to travel to Las Vegas. It's cheaper actually if you fly from uh, Hawaii to Las Vegas as compared to from Las Vegas to say San Diego. Subsidized with uh, uh, lodging discounts with uh, different promotions for Hawaiians. And Hawaii is actually in, uh, thinking about introducing gambling. Do you know why? State revenue, right? All the states are cash strapped and they're thinking what are ways to, um, ways to raise revenue without me losing my political stance and, and political uh, status with the voters? And uh, uh, tax increases aren't popular, right? And so casinos and gambling is a good way. But do you think who's paying for that? When gambling is used to raise uh, public funds, who's paying for it? Do you think people who are more wealthy or people who are less wealthy gamble more? Less wealthy. Less wealthy? Americans gamble a lot, period, okay? But people who are less wealthy actually typically spend a greater percentage of their income on gambling. Why? Why would they do that? To become wealthy, right? There's hope. There's always this hope in gambling, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about today in problem gambling and addicted gambling, how that hope and that dream can become so entrenched and, and become so disruptive in their lives. Uh, next, please. So this is a picture of San Jose. Within a 50-mile radius, there's several gambling opportunities, right? This is roughly 50-mile radius going roughly up to there. This is important because Research has shown that if you live within a 50-mile radius of a casino, your chances of becoming a problem gambler more than double. And so that makes sense, right? If you look at a, a community where 
there's plentiful liquor stores. You're going to expect that consumption of liquor is going to go up. Problems with alcohol will probably go up too. So, um, first one, please. Within city limits, San Jose has two car rooms. You guys know uh, what they are? Which one? What are they called? Oh, the names are there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very honest. Bay 101 and Garden City, right? Combined, they have about uh, 80 tables, gaming tables, with various kinds of games. They have 40 tables each. And in fact, San Jose is actually uh, in, uh, in the process of expanding the tables in these car rooms, aren't they? Right? For increase, they're going to actually go up to, uh, I think, roughly 40, um, uh, 48 or so each, something like that. Um, so this is within city of uh, San Jose. And if you go a little bit north, you have uh, Lucky Chances and Artichoke Joe, right? In the peninsula. And then they roughly, uh, next please, roughly have, um, um, one of them, uh, Lucky Chances is a little bit bigger. It actually has 50 tables. And Artichoke Joe is a little bit smaller. So you can see the tables are adding up, right? <gasps> next. And then um, in, in the East Bay area, a sort of more Contra Costa area also, and then going to Livermore, you have uh, several um, casinos and car rooms are also within uh, driving distance. And they combine. Uh, please. Go up to 195. And just one more in Emeryville, Oaks Car Room, right? So there's a lot of car rooms in the Bay Area. Can we go up to the next number? 235. So do you know what the closest tribal casino to uh, the Bay Area is? These have been all car rooms. Car rooms are independently licensed, private. Well, I already have five minutes left. Indep <laughs> independently licensed, private uh, businesses. Tribal casinos are operated by Native American tribes. So do you know what the closest tribal casino here to here is? Pretty good guesses. Do you guys know Casino San Pablo? Casino San Pablo used to be a car room, it's now a tribal casino. And it's actually in the city of San Pablo, right? Um, can you bring that one up? City of San Pablo, and then the next uh, thing. It actually has over 1,000 machines. These are actually what they call bingo machines. There's a lot of um, policy issues that are, are a very interesting uh, situation here uh, between what uh, casinos are allowed to have and what car rooms are allowed to have. They have these machines that actually look and sound just like slot machines. But under the federal classification, slot machines are class three. You need a compact with the state, an agreement in order to, do, to have those, and they don't. But these are bingo machines, and bingo under uh, federal classification is class two. They don't require a compact. So where do you classify a video machine that looks and, and sounds just like a slot machine but plays bingo? Right? So these are policy implications that are, um, new technology is really presenting us. Same with internet um, gambling. These are new technologies that's really showing us that our policies to protect consumers is not keeping pay in pace with technology. Next. <clears throat> So all these venues are open 24 hours a day and seven days a week, right? Um, most of these places. Are these the only places that uh, the clients that you work with or the friends and the families that you have go to? So can you go on to the next map? This is the state of California map. The red dots are the, uh, red dots are the car rooms and the blue dots are the tribal casinos. Do we have a shortage in California of gambling uh, opportunities? Actually, because California is gradually, steadily by gradually becoming the gambling state. We're going to soon exceed Nevada in terms of gambling revenue. And we're expanding, right? Recently, not too long ago, in 2007, we expanded the largest casinos in Southern California through Proposition 94 through 97. Do you guys remember that? Those were already some of the largest casinos in California. And they now can be bigger than the biggest casinos in, in the U.S. 